Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks, and this evening I'm joined by... Mark. Sarah. And we've just finished playing Gloomhaven, which is absolutely massive. Let me just show you the box here. I don't know if you can see hand for comparison here. And look in this gigantic box here. There's absolutely tons of stuff that comes with the game. It's a scenario-driven RPG kind of dungeon crawl. You can see there's like a dungeon crawl element to it here. But there's also a kind of RPG element. You start in the town of Gloomhaven here, and there's a kind of zoomed-in area here. You can see there's lots of different areas of the city. Uh, there's a big book. Have you got the book, Mark? Massive. So when you first start off, there's quite a lot of theme, and you read pages out of this. Yeah. Book, you can see, for the different scenario. Um, and the stories, I thought, were well-written. Lots of theme. Uh, very much gets you in the feeling of it. Uh, but at some point... Uh, you go off on a mission. So you kind of tool up, you get some gold to start with, you buy some stuff, and then you go to your first mission, which is located here. And you'll notice there's lots of little numbers all over the map. You don't know what these are at the start, but as you go through, you actually stick stickers on. So it's kind of a legacy game. So you put stickers on as you uh, discover different places, you go on the missions, and when you go on the mission, you then go into the kind of dungeon, and you work your way through the rooms. Now, the whole map is laid out at the start, but you don't know what's in the room until you get to it. So if we were about to go into this room, you wouldn't see anything here. But as soon as you open the door, then you populate it with all the monsters. And they may come and attack you straight away. You may get to attack them first. There's an initiative order that determines that kind of thing. But in terms of how you actually play the game, you have a set of cards. Um, you have a character board, obviously, with health and experience that you get. And then you take these cards. And if I just lay them out, you can see them. Uh, it's not a... Um, you know, it's not like a deck. You have all these cards available to you at any one point. So you can pick any card you like. Um, and as my character, I had eight cards to pick from each time. But the cards are multi-use. So there's a top half and there's a bottom half. Each time when you play, you pick two cards. So whenever it's your character's turn to act, you're using these two cards. You get to use the top half of one card the bottom half of the other card, but you can decide which way around it is. So there's quite a bit of flexibility, even in the middle of a fight, potentially. The big number in the middle is your initiative, and you can choose which of these numbers you're using, so you can determine how early in the fight you go. Uh, the baddies, they get cards and initiative as well. So this says what the particular baddie's going to do. So there's an archer here. They each have their own stats, so health, movement, attack power, everything else. But that says what they're going to do. So if it doesn't have move on here, you draw a new card each time, each round. So if it doesn't say move, some of them do and some of them doesn't, then they wouldn't move. If it doesn't say attack, they wouldn't attack. But then there's also you get the initiative so you can see in what order they're going to go. So each of the characters here are going to go in different orders. Uh, these are the baddies. All the baddies are done with standees, but the heroes get nice miniatures, uh, which are well done. So yes, you pick your two cards. You uh, execute them. Some of them will let you move. Some of them will let you attack. You've got ranged attacks. Obviously, I was a spell weaver, so I get to fire fireballs at creatures and things. Uh, there's a nice uh, system where, you see, there's a leaf thing here, up here. When, if they, they all start at the bottom here, and if you cast a spell with a leaf, it goes up to the top, which means there's kind of leaf power available, and anyone can use this. It gradually ticks down each round until it's gone, but while it's here, it can supercharge other spells or abilities that people have. So that's quite nice. You go through, you can see baddies drop coins. Once they die, so you pick up gold that way, which you can spend at the shop when you get back to town. And you fight until they die. Uh, one other thing I should mention is it can be quite difficult in games like this to track all the different damage on all the enemies. You know, all the characters have their own character board, and that's fine. You track it here. But the enemies, how do you track the damage? Well, the way it's done in this game is for the all the archers... They're numbered, so if you look on one of these arches, I'm not sure if you can see here, but this is number four, and that one at the back is number six. So when you damage them, you put them on here. So you put any damage for number four here, damage for number six here. So you don't have lots and lots of tokens cluttering the area. It makes it much more easy to track the damage. So you go through the mission, you kill the monsters, you get the treasure, and um, explore more of the world, and you get more theme, and you get to improve your characters. They can level up. You have a little sheet here for tracking things. So you sort of put ticks on here as you complete objectives, which um, adds to your character's ability. And as they get better levels, they're going to have better health and things like that. All right. What do we think? Because it's so early in, in it, and because it is a legs game, it's really hard to say. You split it into two. I think these bits say this is... I mean, this is not a super complicated dungeon crawl. If you're just looking purely as 
that bit you were going around, ignoring the rest of it. It's easier than something like Descent. There's probably less going on. There's less, surprisingly because of your hand of cards, there's less fiddly. There's not loads of piles of cards here and there. You're generally just looking at your deck of cards. This is relatively streamlined-ish and quite yori. There's not loads of dice chucking. There's limited amount of randomness in it. But you have to take that into the set of all the rest of this world and the fact that you're going to be exploring. Um, you might, between one and another person, not see the same locations because things can open, like particular chests might give you maps to other locations, something you may never see. With regards to the events, you might kill somebody at one point in the game or take an action this that later down the line affects what you do. So there's a lot of, I mean, like with the cards, the fact that you'll be able to add stickers on the cards to give you like, make it do plus one extra damage and stuff, another legacy stuff. It's really hard to say. I like, I think that the, it's tough and I think it works as a relatively streamlined dungeon crawl, but I can't say about the legacy bit because I think that's going to create many, many more repeated plays. Okay. Sarah? Um, so I quite like legacy games. Um, obviously, you had Pandemic Leg Legacy that was absolutely awesome. So I'm intrigued to find out how this carries on as a legacy game. I do get quite nervous ripping up um, different cards, so we haven't quite done that yet. Um, but I really like where we've ended up putting like the extra stickers on the board because it just makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, a couple of things that are niggly bits to me on it is to start off in the game you've not got brilliant equipment it might be just like a one-off use so we've got like um i had this hammer at this time you'd expect equipment to carry on throughout it but this was just a one-off use so i'm hoping as we get further on through the game we'll actually have more equipment that will last longer because it would just make it slightly be um, easier to kill some of these bad guys um, and the only other thing that i would point out on this one is on your um the baddies on this one you've got obviously your gold for your elite and the white um for your normal minions but then on the actual sheets as you can see on there that johnson's pointing to it would have been nice if it was a slightly better colour in relation to the actual um, stand, so it was just slightly easier to look at because it doesn't really look quite gold on there. Um, yeah, so this is supposed to be the elite side for the gold ones and this is supposed to be the silver side, I think, for the non-elite mm, ones. Yeah, um, so apart from that, the last, the tiny little niggly bits, I think this is going to be actually a really good game, but as Mark says, it needs a lot more plays um, to really get into the nitty-gritty of it. One thing to think, for people who play Legacy games, this is more like Risk Legacy than Pandemic. While there is structure with the scenarios, it's more of a case of you will open things as you do stuff, as opposed to Pandemic, which is much more funneled down a specific route. You know that you're going to draw off the deck and eventually you'll see something and that event will happen. While Risk was like, if you did to do a certain number of things, fire certain more weapons, you get to open up this slot, like this sealed envelope. It's more like that than Pandemic, I'd say. Okay. Rating out of 10, Sarah? I would say a good 7.5. Okay. Mark? Uh, I think, yeah, I think I'm somewhere between 7 and 8 at the moment. I just need to see where it goes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I really liked it. Uh, there's lots to like here. As Mark says, the dungeon crawl element is fairly streamlined. It's fairly straightforward. There's lots of bits to it, but once you know what you're doing, it plays smoothly, and that's really nice. And my favourite part of it, though, was actually more the RPG side of it. The theme's great. The, the stories they read out really got me involved. I was getting into it. Um, again, it's hard to know how much variability there's going to be, but there is tons of stuff that we sort of haven't seen yet. But the actual dungeon crawl, the three rooms you see that we've kind of cleared in this scenario... We're all fairly similar things each time, and you do need to think quite hard. That's one of the interesting things. Making these decisions about the cards actually took more time than you'd think. Even though you're only picking two cards, it's like, from all the cards you could pick, which top half and bottom half combination am I going to use? And because there's so many options there, uh, that means it can take a bit of time to make your decisions. So... It actually took longer than I was expecting it to, uh, given that once you actually everyone's made the decision, the fighting and things plays out fairly quickly. One other thing I will mention is that whenever you attack something, you flip over one of these cards and it is a, adds a modifier to the attack. So sometimes your attacks might be better. That's like a minus one, a minus two. Sometimes they're not as good. So this is a plus one, obviously. And you can even miss completely if you draw a bad card. So that's just an interesting bit of variability that adds to it. And the baddies have their own deck, so they vary their attacks as well. So you can't always guarantee to hit 
the bad guy, you know, if you need five points of damage to kill it, you never know if you're actually going to manage it or not. And sometimes you do a lot more damage than you expect to. So that was a really nice element. Uh, so yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Um, and as they say, it'd be interesting, I guess, to see um, how it's going to develop with the legacy element. But there is tons and tons of stuff. You could play this game all year, I think, almost every <laughs> night and still not get through all the stuff. So loads of replayability on this one. Uh, in terms of rating, I'd probably be on a... 7 out of 10, I think. All right, thanks for watching. That was Gloomhaven.